What are we doing today? Today we're gonna chill out together and go over how I like to give my titles a little character, taking inspiration from some of my favorite 70s and older films, like Badlands here by Terrence Malick. So we're in Final Cut Pro and we're gonna go through the process of what I do to make my titles look kinda like titles from a 70s film like this. So let's get into it. Join me in the edit bay together. So you might be wondering, hey, how did you get this clip from the movie into your video editing software? Real simple. Uh, I just went to YouTube and found the Badlands opening scene, copied the URL, pasted it into an app I love called Pulltube, which I'll link down in the description. Some of the characteristics that I like of older 1970s style titles. You can see here with Martin Sheen, uh, we've got one font here up at the top, all in caps, and then we have this font as well, all in caps, but then you can see these uh, secondary letters are a smaller font size than the leading font. Now the main title though is all the same font, but you can see here there's also some spacing. The color's a little bit light, and you won't be able to see this probably in the screen recording, but there's just the slightest sort of gradient, like there's like an inner glow going on where the color isn't perfectly uniform across the letters. There's a black drop shadow here. Uh, and of course, with older film, uh, when they did these titles, you know, these were like, I think, like hand painted and overlaid on the film. I don't, honestly don't even know what the process is. If you know of a video that shows like how they made old titles in 1970s movies, I would love to see it. But sometimes there's a little bit of shake to the title and sometimes there's a little bit of noise on it. So we're going to go through in Final Cut some of the things that I do to give character to our titles. Because what I don't like is I don't like these perfectly crisp digital titles that don't have any character to them. So let's get into this. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at a clip from uh, my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, the original. I've been filming with this lately. And I got a shot here of the Omaha skyline, and I need to grade it really quick. I know this isn't a color grading tutorial, but I'm realizing I didn't put a grade on it. So we're going to grab Film Convert Nitrate here and go through the grading process real quick. I'm just gonna open the controls. I'll have a link to Film Convert Nitrate down in the description. It is an affiliate link, of course. They're not sponsoring this video, nothing like that, but they did comp me Film Convert Nitrate, and I do get a 10% commission on any sales from the software. So we're gonna plug in Blackmagic Design, and then we're gonna put in Pocket Cinema Camera. We're gonna set this to Film. And, uh, you know, this isn't this isn't too bad. Let's just play with the exposure a little bit. Bring that down. We're a little overexposed. That's looking good. Um, let me play with the temperature. We'll warm it up just a touch. Uh, we'll leave that Kodak Vision 3 as far as that goes. We'll leave the grain in. Um, I'm going to just do a little bit of an S-curve on this bad boy and get that a little punchier. Let's bring this down just a touch. All right, and then I'm gonna do one last adjustment. I'm gonna leave this open over here. There's uh, this, this adjustment came over to Final Cut Pro from uh, the iPad update that they released. It's called Color Adjustments, and I really love this black point. It just really gives me like a little bit of a crunchier film look uh, that I really like. I'm just gonna pull these highlights down a touch as well. So that to me, you know, looks good. We can start uh, with this and let's just go back and see here we've got uh, sort of a bluer, greener uh, color profile to this, but that's no big deal. It does match the yellow of that a little bit more complementary, whereas with mine being a little bit more on the reddish side, it's going to clash a little bit with that yellow color, but that's okay. All right, so what do we need to do next? I don't know what font this is. I have an idea of what font it is, but I don't know for sure. So I need to use a resource on the web that will let me identify the font. But first I need to export a still frame. So I'm gonna to go to share, save current frame, and then uh, um, font ID. We'll call it Badlands font ID. I'm gonna hit next. Then I'm gonna to navigate to where my video is, which is right here. I'm gonna to go to media and then uh, we'll just put it in the media folder and then save. So that's going to export that out. Now the website that I use is myfonts.com and they have this really cool tool called What the Font 
that lets you uh, upload an image and it will tell you roughly what the font is. So let's go ahead and grab what we exported. Um, we'll go here and then my media folder and then the Badlands font ID and we'll hit upload. And then it's gonna analyze the image. It's gonna find some text. Um, we don't want this one, so I'm gonna remove that. And we don't want this one, so I'm gonna remove this. It kind of saw some fonts where there weren't any. And then I'm gonna identify the font. So here we go. So Penumbra Flare, that one's pretty good. That looks good. ITC Cable. Now, a lot of the fonts that this will identify are fonts that you have to pay for. Um, and I'm pretty sure that this font, I don't know if I have this one, but let me just double check real quick by going up to the application font book. And I'm gonna switch back to a darker thing because that's gonna make me look a little bright. And we'll go to all fonts and I'm gonna search Penumbra. I don't believe I have, oh, do I? I do have it, Penumbra Flare Standard, okay. So I'm gonna to switch to my other project and then I'm gonna put in a title tool. Now there's a keyboard shortcut you can use to do that, Control T. I actually have it programmed um, onto this, a Stream Deck mobile on my iPad and I can just hit one button, it'll put a title in over the top. So we'll go ahead and extend that out and we're gonna type in, I'm gonna name my fake movie here, we're just gonna call it Omaha. And then I wanna to switch to that font Penumbra. So type in P see if it's in here. There it is, Penumbra Flare Standard, beautiful. Now we need to increase the size, so I'm gonna just jack this up all the way to the top. But the other thing I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to bring in um, that font or that uh, image that we exported, and then I'm gonna bring it in underneath this, extend it out, and then I'm gonna drop the opacity of this top layer so I can position the font in a similar position in my fake movie called Omaha. So we need to make this a little smaller. And Omaha has fewer letters, so you know, give or take uh, on the size just can be approximate. And then we're still centered. And then I'm going to return the opacity to full. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this next to it so I can sample the color. And let's see here. I need to go to the title. And then we're going to go to the font. And then we're going to go down here to face and click show. And I'm going to use the eyedropper. And I'm going to sample this color. And I'm also going to drag it into my little shortcut so it's always there. Put this back. Grab this. Go back to face. And then grab that color picker. Okay. So we're, we're getting there. Now we might change the position of this Omaha title because it's right over the skyline. Maybe we'll put it up here just to put it into the negative space. Not exactly the same as Badland, but pretty good. So the first thing I want to do to try to emulate this title is I want to uh, put in a drop shadow. So we'll go ahead and put a drop shadow in and I'm going to make the opacity solid black and then I'm going to just play around with the distance a little bit and this. So then I'm also going to adjust the tracking of the text just to give it a little bit more space like the Badland title has. It's not too spaced out, but the way that this was originally was a little too close together. And then I want to make sure that we're centered. So that's starting to look good. You can see that the drop shadow is pretty much straight off to the right. So I've got a little bit of a downward angle, so I'm gonna just bring this up a little bit more. Something like that. And then I'm gonna make the distance, I'm gonna drop that down a touch more. All right, now what I'm gonna do is, this is too crisp. It's too polished and crisp. I need it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit blurry or a little bit less clearly define a little less sharp. So I'm gonna go uh, into my effects browser here and type in Gauss 
and go to Gaussian Blur. And now obviously that's way too much blur, so we're gonna go and drop the amount down quite a bit. This doesn't need to be super blurry, but just a touch blurrier. Something like this is already starting to look good. Let's go ahead and type in 1.75. And already, I know it's a very subtle difference, but a lot of these subtle differences are really what give you that character that you're really hoping for. Now, one thing I'm noticing is my font is not quite as bold, so I wanna see if I can make it a bolder font. Yeah, there we go. So you can do semi-bold or bold. I think we're gonna go with semi-bold. And it's a little bit bolder, I think, than the Badlands font, but that'll be all right. Also gonna adjust the color just a touch because I feel like it's a little too on the pastel side. I want this to be a little bit more of a of a richer yellow color, uh, moving closer to mustard than pastel. I like this a lot better. Now, one other little fine thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an outer glow. So we can check the glow box here and then hit show. And then we're going to increase the radius just a touch. And let's just go crazy. You can see how, how it's a little bit much right there. But what this does is this just kind of blurs the lines a little bit of the font. It makes it just a little bit less of a crisp defined edge. But I'm also gonna drop the opacity down just a touch, just so it's not like, it's not making the font extra bold by doing it. So if we go back to fit, see here, it's starting to look pretty good the way I like it. So this is already starting to look pretty good, but I want a touch more drop shadow because I feel like it's gone, um, gone away just a little bit with the glow effect that I've done. So I'm gonna throw a little bit more distance on this and that's looking about right. Let's see here, back and forth, pretty similar. Now, something else that I like to do is I like to give the font a little bit of movement, just a little bit of a, kind of a shake or a tremor. And there's a great free effect here in Final Cut built in called Earthquake. And we can drag that on. And this is gonna make it super shaky, right? Which is just way too shaky. But if we bring it down and make it really subtle, somewhere down, we'll try a one and see how that registers. It's really hard to tell, but it's just moving a tiny bit. Let's go to um, two and see what that looks like. And I think that's almost a little bit too much. So let's go to 1.75. And then I'll zoom in here for you so you can see what it looks like close up while it shakes. Yeah, it's just got this slightest kind of film filmic kind of tremor to it that I think just looks really good. And if we take this effect and we remove all the stuff that we did to it, we can get an idea of a before and after. So you can see there's quite a difference when we put them side by side. We'll go ahead and zoom in here, take a closer look. And this is what I'm going for. I think with them side by side, you could probably argue that the bottom one's maybe a little too blurred, I don't really see that because we're also zoomed in right now, so it's gonna be a little bit more prominent. But this to me still looks good, but it doesn't have the character of the blurred, uh, the edges are kind of glowing, all that kind of stuff. I really like those effects added on to make it a little bit more visually interesting. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a fade, because here in uh, the Badlands clip, we've got uh, a nice little fade up on the title. And movie fades, they're so hard to replicate in a, in a video editor. Um, let's go ahead and go to cross dissolve. And I've got a bunch in there that I don't want. And I like a nice two second dissolve. So I'm hitting control D and I'm gonna say two zero zero to make it two seconds. We're gonna go option W um, to add a gap clip just so we can get into this. And then I'm gonna select the transition and change it from video to film, and I'm gonna make the ease amount go all the way to 100, and we'll see what that looks like. I also want this transition on the other side, so I'm gonna press and hold Option, and then click and drag to duplicate that transition, and then I'm gonna disable this clip. So let's take a look at what that looks like, and I'm gonna bring this in just a touch so it fades in earlier. 
Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good. The cross dissolves just aren't the same, though, as as the 70s movies. I mean, just look at this beauty fade in. It's just like if you go frame by frame, the way it fades in, the color kind of goes from a green to this brighter color on digital. It's just it's just too digital. <laughs> And you can see that little bit of tremor from the earthquake effect. And I think this makes for a really nice sort of film emulation for your opening titles. If you really like that 70s look and want your titles to have a little bit more character. I do this even in my tutorials or basic videos. I just put a touch of a blur on there, a little bit of a glow. I don't always use drop shadow. I don't always use earthquake, but I, I try to just make the title look a little less crisp and digital and clean and sharp. So that's it. Those are some helpful tips for how you can take your titles and give them a little bit of character, a little bit of uh, variation so that they don't look so sharp, crisp, and digital. Now, if you like videos like this, I've got another video here on the channel that you can check out all about a tip that I learned. I've been using Final Cut for 10 years and I learned a brand new tip that kind of blew me away just a few months ago. Check that video out and until the next one, I'll see y'all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.